G'day guys and gal, demons are not the greatest guests to a party, to put it lightly. Actually, that really depends on what kind of demon you invite. But as a rule of thumb, they will always ruin you in some way or another. The only real advantage when facing a demon is the fact that they have all these like random rules and weaknesses. You know their name? Bam! You win. You hit them with a melee sword that you believe has the come of Jesus Christ on it? Whoosh! Goodbye demon. There are a ton of random things that knock a demon on its ass. But what if there just straight up wasn't? What if there was a demon that was so powerful that it was able to ignore literally every classic weakness of a demon? A demon that could easily kill blanks, possess titans, tear apart custodians, a demon that could even kill the emperor. That is what Draknian is. Well, at least until he became Abaddon's overpowered toothpick. Before we get started, we all know and love Geology, a brand of male specific skincare that can treat dark bags under the eyes, acne, redness, oily, or dry skin. It slaps. But before I tickle their family jewels and utterly convince you as to why they are a must have for any man who enjoys getting laid or, you know, just wants a nice face, I first got to mention that they've agreed to bump up the discount for the first trial package, which includes five items from 50% off all the way up to 70% off. These are physical products, not just some like digital product that pretends to always be like 95% off as a marketing ploy. But I've gotten ahead of myself. Geology takes out the effort and confusion dudes feel when they want to get into skincare by letting us fill out a skin survey and then delivering the product straight to our doorstep with easy to follow instructions. I've been using Geology exclusively as my skincare for months and my skin has never looked or felt better. It's significantly less oily and blotchy. So to get that delicious 70% off, then use my link below. This is one of those brands that you just don't want to skip. Trust me. Cheers to Geology for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over the unstoppable Draknian, where he came from, his powers and abilities, what he did with himself, and how he ended up being Abaddon's sword. Also, huge shout out to John Stowe Art for this piece I commissioned. It shows off Draknians and the Emperor's fateful duel, which was the climax of the legendary book, Master of Mankind. His socials will be in the description below if you want to check out more of his work, or even commission your own artwork through him. Let's get into it. <laughs> When most demons are created, it's because their patron chaos god decides to have a wank or pick his toenails or something. A small part of the greater deity is shed to spawn a new sentient demon. However, that was not the case with the birth of Draknian. Under special circumstances that have a profound effect on the warp, demons, or even minor chaos gods, which, you know, Draknian certainly could qualify for, are born, shedding the weaknesses that plague the other demons and gaining tremendous power. In Draknian's case, he was born as a result of the first first time a human took another human's life in cold bloody murder. Not in war, not in disagreement or anything, a raw malicious killing. For this circumstance, it was when Cain murdered Abel. Despite the actual killing itself, happening between two non-psychic, insignificant people, generally not enough to even make the warp blink, it set a precedence that would reverberate for as long as mankind existed. As the warp acts independently of time, this first murder was equivalent to the force of every human murder since, if that makes any sense. Drachnian didn't just pop out of the womb like a fucking xenomorph though. The first murder was just the seed. However, Drac... However, Draknian also gained another ability, another title, the Ender of Empires. What this meant is that as long as humanity built empires, then humanity's empires would end. The Draknian feeds on that inevitability, which gives him a shit ton of power. With the Imperium of Man being the greatest empire of all, Draknian's power was reaching critical mass. However, Draknian was incredibly inexperienced. He was a monster, a megalodon apex predator in the warp, yet he was barely sent in and didn't know how to breach real space. He tried to materialize a few times during the Great Crusade and Horus Heresy. After all, that was full of murder and betrayal, so definitely his vibe. But he couldn't quite crack it or have much of an impact. So despite being the end of empires, all he could really do was jack himself off until Magnus did nothing wrong and fucked up everything. When Magnus breached the Emperor's webway, mankind's last chance to permanently beat Chaos, there was a gaping hole leading into the warp, meaning demons could just happily pour in like an endless tide. It also flooded the webway with warp jizz, so the demons can easily maintain their forms whilst also being empowered. 
Draknian entered the webway with them and the Emperor felt its disturbing presence. It was almost like Draknian scaled to and was linked to the Emperor as the absolute polar opposites of each other. The Emperor was the builder of empires whilst Draknian was their ender. You know, despite having never ended one before, but you know, that's besides the point. It's more of a symbolic title. Draknian was like a wild beast, stalking the webway corridors and ambushing Mechanicum and Imperial forces. Firstly, it attacked a group of combat servitors. It was so agile that despite them unloading a barrage of heavy bolter fire at it, not a single shot hit. Their targeting locks refused to focus on it and it easily tore them to shreds, consuming their memories to increase its sentience. Then it ambushed and devoured an advanced Mechanicum construct, a greater soul which boosted its knowledge more. Once it had gained some confidence, it started to ambush Custodian and Sisters of Silence patrols. It cut through Aurora Mite like paper, tearing Custodian's limb from limb. Now you'd think that Sisters of Silence would fuck it up, because of their blankness, and whilst Drakian definitely wasn't vibing their presence, he came up with creative ways to kill them, including possessing the dead corpse of a Custodian and using that powerful corpse to fight and kill them. He realized that as long as he could possess a physical form, he could kill the Sisters of Silence. This corpse possession is a unique and powerful ability, especially when done to a custodian. The possession was also very solid. The silent sister originally couldn't tell, and the speed and the fluidity of the possessed custodian corpse was impressive, not just like a janky meat puppet. However, Drakian's bloodshed attracted a new nemesis that he never expected, Ra Endymion, tribune of the custodies and the emperor's chosen champion. Ra set a trap for Drachnian, which the bestial demon fell into. Drachnian was shot to shreds, stabbed and cut, and actually freaked the fuck out. He felt his form dying, and the threat of banishment was genuinely there. Destiny was almost denied by one Gigachad golden boy. However, in a show of obscene power, Drachnian shapeshifted multiple times, absorbed physical material as a shield, turned into a hurricane of teeth and blade, before becoming a fucking demon dragon thinger and flying away. He had been genuinely wounded, but despite this, he survived intact. This lesson was the biggest of all, as he felt vulnerable for the first time. As such, he went back to being a stealthy possessive bitch and straight up possessed a loyalist titan princeps. Executing the titan's crew, Drachnian believed with such a powerful weapon at his disposal, he could use it to kill the Emperor. However, unfortunately for Drachnian, his loyalist titan that he was possessing was targeted by traitor ones, being heavily damaged. In a sad twist of fate, a legendary loyalist titan came to his aid, killed the two traitor titans attacking him in one of the greatest shows of skill and bravery that a titan has ever displayed, only for Drachnian to then point blank blast the loyalist titan and kill it before leaving the body of the princeps to find a better meat suit. Yeah, Drachnian's a fucking dick. Drachnian would find his new meat suit. The Archimendrite, a hectic Mechanicum cyborg mecha warrior who was considered to be the avatar of the Omnisize Wrath, the unmaker aspect of their machine god. This was the Mechanicum's version of a Primarch, and it was a beast, a huge impregnable chassis, missile pods everywhere, supreme intelligence, plasma cannons. It even had forbidden Dark Age of Technology weapons. Literally imagine an agile dreadnought where someone has kitbashed 1000 weapons onto it. Drachnian possessed this living weapon and used it to attack the last of the Imperial defenders. It tore through the Sisters of Silence, butchered the Custodes, slaughtered an Imperial Knight, and decked a Custodian Dreadnought. It took a seriously Chad moment from a Blood Angel hero with a sack full of grenades with the power of friendship to bring the Archimandrite down. As the last of the defenders were about to get overwhelmed, the Emperor came forth with burning fury, massacring most of the demonic army in pretty short order, before compelling Drachnian to come forth and fight him. Drachnian was pretty shitty that none of his flesh toys survived long enough to be used against the Emperor, so he took the form of Cain, the man who committed the first murder. The Emperor and Drachnian charged, and to everyone's horror and amazement, Drachnian scored first blood, impaling the Emperor with a five-pronged spear. Drachnian then lifts the Emperor off his feet and holds him up, triumphant about his golden shish kebab. But as Titsnitch would say, just as planned. 
the Emperor is able to crush and reshape Drachnian into a gnarly sword. He then impales Drachnian into Ra and tells Ra to run into the webway, so that Drachnian would never be able to threaten mankind's fate again. From here, we don't know exactly what happened. What we do know is that Ra's body became Drachnian's jail, and that Drachnian had next to no chance of being able to possess Ra or escape without help. We also know that a few hundred years later, Abaddon claims Drachnian as his sword, with everyone else who tried to claim him before Abaddon not being able to even grasp the blade. It seems that Abaddon either fought and killed Ra, or Ra willingly led him to Drachnian to claim. This sounds like a weird thing of Ra to do until we think about the bigger picture. Drachnian, as an uncaged, unrestricted demon, was able to possess titans, slaughter custodians and sisters of silence, and badly wound the emperor. As a sword, he is just really good at cutting shit. Someone like Abaddon is too proud to unleash and release his sword demon as an independent weapon, and he is happy to leave it caged up as his own blade. In his hands, Abaddon had a tough fight against Manius Kalgar, whilst various other Space Marine champions have given him a run for his money. Ra must have known that eventually Chaos would reclaim Drachnian, so I believe he ensured it would go to a Chaos champion who would keep it caged, and mostly harmless in the grand scheme of things. We won't know for sure until the next Black Legion book comes out, but I would say that Drachnian didn't choose Abaddon. Ra chose Abaddon for Drachnian. That would be good fucking writing. Shows that Ra's sacrifice and the Emperor's plan wasn't a complete waste that fucking backfired. Since being in the sword form, the Drachnian has been Abaddon's powerful yet contained weapon. It can only enact its power whenever Abaddon is in melee combat, and whilst that power is awesome, like the sword can cut through literally anything, including shit that's supposed to be impossible to cut through, like Marnius' gauntlets of Ultramar or a 3 metre thick adamantium gate, it's still limited by Abaddon. Ra's sacrifice was not in vain. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then buy one of the new Major Kill cosplay nudie calendars. Four models, 12 cosplays, and a whole lot of titties. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more murderous content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.